All right, with this uh, forecast video update on this Wednesday, August the 26th, this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. I hope that you guys had a great Wednesday. And, of course, it's been an, once again another hot day all across Central Florida. We saw some uh, uh, 90s all across the entire viewing area, along with, some, along with those uh, feels like temperatures in the uh, triple digits. We'll look at those in just a little bit. But the big story is, is pretty much uh, Laura. Hurricane Laura continues to remain uh, in effect across the Gulf Coast as a cap as a cap four, as about to move as about to move uh, into landfall across the Texas and the Louisiana Gulf Coast regions, which we'll look at that as well in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and take a look what's happening right now on the radar and show you what's going on in Central Florida at this uh, eight o'clock hour. And uh, as you can see, we're basically looking at some drier conditions here in and around Central Florida since the rain chances were low again today. Uh, but still, it's possible to see a few isolated showers too. But again, it was nothing to nothing to worry about. Uh, but there are a couple of isolated uh, uh, brief showers and sprinkles right now happening right along the coast of uh, I ninety five and off towards the coast of um, of uh, Volusia and Brevard counties, as you can tell. But other than that, it looks like our conditions again are looking pretty are pretty uh, good for the moment. So if you got any evening plans here tonight, uh, you'll be good to you'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and take a look at those temperatures again that we saw today here in Central Florida. And uh, so we'll go back about uh, about four o'clock this afternoon, or, or, or maybe you should say before before four o'clock. For example, right here in Orlando, we saw a high temperature today at about ninety five degrees. Once you go farther south into Kissimmee, it looks like you've uh, folks did hit a high temperature at ninety four. Lakeland. You guys actually saw a high temperature at around 92. Once you go up towards the uh, villages into Ocala, uh, looks like you both did, did hit 94 this afternoon as well. Uh, farther north you go into uh, Sanford, you did hit a high temperature at about 92. For you folks over in, Ti in, in Titusville, Daytona Beach, and Palm Coast, it looks like you, uh, you folks mostly hit upper 80s to around 90. So, yep, it's been another hot summer day here all across central Florida as we are in late August. But as, we go, but as we go ahead and take a look at our temperatures currently here uh, this evening in central Florida, as you can see, it's still quite warm out there. But uh, again, it's not really as uh, hot like we saw today since the sun is setting. So, for example, we got 88 degrees right now in Orlando. 88 is the uh, current temperature in Kissimmee. We got 87 in Lakeland. Same thing for you folks in the villages. Back down over towards uh, Titusville and Sanford, we got 86 in Ocala. And 85 is the uh, current temperature for you folks both in Daytona Beach and also for the Palm Coast uh, areas. So, yep, it's been a warm day here in Central Florida, but we got more heat on the way for the next uh, uh, few days as we get through the rest of this final full work week of work week of August. So, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, future cash flow we're expected as far as rain chances go for the next couple of days. Since you know it's still going to remain very low, but sometimes possible they see just a few showers and a couple of thunder showers uh, for Thursday and Friday before our rain chances start to uh, creep back up again. By the time we get into the uh, weekend. And again, guys, if you're just uh, popping into Facebook Live this evening, I wouldn't mind if you could uh, go ahead and share this video to your other uh, Facebook f followers, because remember, my motto is uh, sharing is caring. And before we also get we get, we get started with the uh, feature cast, we'll go ahead and I'm going to go ahead, I should say, and uh, share this uh, feed to one of my other pages. So hang on just, just a second and we'll get things uh, started. All right, so here's Futurecast. So heading into the rest of for the rest of uh, tonight, it looks like we'll be looking dry here in Central Florida with uh, clear skies. I don't know why Futurecast is loading up here. Should come up in just a second. Sometimes it could go a little it could go a little slow, but here it is. So overnight tonight, again, we'll see clear skies with low temperatures in the uh, 70s, and we'll see the same thing once the sun comes up early tomorrow morning. Again, we'll start off with. Uh, Morning glows in the uh, 70s, so looking great for your morning commute. And then heading into uh, tomorrow afternoon, that's when we'll see maybe just a few isolated pop-up showers and storms that could form maybe just south of uh, Orlando, basically, according to what Futurecast is showing. So basically anywhere from near Kissimmee back down over towards St. Cloud and over towards the uh, Haines Cities area, it looks like it may see just a couple of uh, storms 
as we head towards mid-afternoon tomorrow, but otherwise it looks like other places, like including the Metro, up and around uh, Daytona Beach, Sanford, Palm Coast, and Ocala looks, Ocala looks to stay uh, pretty dry. But again, it'll be rel- relatively hot with mostly temperatures uh, staying in the 90s with heat index values in the triple digits. But uh, it looks like we could, we could use maybe a little bit of a shower activity here and around Orlando as we head towards uh, between 5 and 6. So that could affect maybe your evening commute. But again, it's not going to be like a total washout, so just please note that. But there still could be maybe a few showers possible, not just here in Orlando, but some back, maybe down back into the uh, Florida's Turnpike, at least the corridor there, maybe south of uh, Kissimmee, back down into the uh, Lake Kissimmee area. And there could be some showers right here and around, maybe around portions of uh, Lake County near the villages to uh, Clearmont and some right, right up in, in and around uh, Ocala and back down into uh, Bushnell. So look, so look out for some showers tomorrow evening, at least isolated spotty showers. And then headed into about around sunset or so, it looks like we'll see these showers and a couple of thunder showers taper off, except there could be maybe a few left over in and around Marion County. But otherwise, if you got any plans for the evening uh, tomorrow, whether you expect to be going out to dinner or maybe out to a movie, uh, you'll be in pretty good shape. And then heading into the overnight hours, late tomorrow night into early Friday, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll start off the day into the 70s, as always, like we've been seeing lately this summer with uh, with some sunshine to start off. And then as we head towards the afternoon, again, we'll see more showers and storms pop up across central Florida. And there could be maybe a high chance of rain uh, for some places north of Orlando. So basically, if you live anywhere from... Uh, uh, Lake Mary to Daytona Beach and Palm Coast, you may see maybe a good chance for some rain as we head towards Friday afternoon. But other than that, the rain chance still looks to be fairly low, like right here in Orlando, somewhere else in Kissimmee, Lakeland, and even the villages. It looks like the rain chances for the rest of y'all, again, looks to be really low as our temperatures stay pretty hot and muggy with 90s and heat index uh, temperatures in the uh, triple digits. And then it looks like there could be, could be still, again, a good shot of rain, not just for the afternoon on Friday, but into the early evening. So that could maybe affect your plans. So if you live north of Orlando, you may want to be aware of that. So uh, so it's not just uh, Sanford that may see maybe the, the rain chances to continue Friday evening, but also there could be some more uh, good chances of rain basically stretching back into northwestern Orange County, at least over near the Apopka area, and back over towards Paisley and east of Ocala. So still gives maybe a good shot of some showers and storms as we head towards uh, Friday evening, about uh, an hour before sunset. But other than that, it looks like Orlando and South looks to be relatively dry for for the moment. So, uh, <clears throat> so I think you be so, so I think if you live in, in the Orlando metro, your evening plans should be okay. But if anything changes, we'll let you know. But again, the higher chance of rain will stay farther up north uh, by Friday afternoon. And then it looks like as we head towards. Uh, Mid-evening into the overnight hours, it looks like we'll see the rain taper off, and they'll give us uh, some dry conditions with low temperatures in the um, 70s. So there, you, so there you have it. So since there could be a good chance of rain on Friday, let's see how many, or, or, or I take that back. I meant to say, let's see uh, how much is what I meant to say, how much uh, rain, how much rain the, that these areas north of Orlando could pick up here in the next uh, couple days, especially Friday. As we look at the rainfall total product accumulation on Featurecast. It should load up any time now. So again, this model will carry, <coughs> again, this model run will carry all the way through early Saturday morning. So it seems like there could be some good totals in some localized spots for areas north of Orlando as we head towards uh, Friday when the chance, the higher chances of rain will develop. So basically back into, uh, uh, let's say, maybe west of I-4, or maybe I should say the I-4 corridor in west over and towards Seminole County, up towards northeastern Lake, which includes uh, the Paisley area, back into eastern Marion and Volusia County. So it looks like you, you folks may see some localized totals that can range between two to four inches of rain as we head towards that day. Other locations could see maybe less than an inch, perhaps maybe close to an inch of rain, including right here in Orlando with these uh, isolated showers and storms as we head towards uh, the day on Friday. Could be some good totals right down, down here in southern Osceola County, too, and same thing back into southern Polk counties where these, these folks could range between two to four inches as well. Uh, so, uh, so, there you go. so there you guys have it. 
All right. So uh, the big again, the other big story this evening this, this evening is the uh, tropics as we continue to, as we continue to uh, track Hurricane Laura that is in the Gulf of Mexico region. And as you can see in these uh, red shaded colors right there, at least the lighter, uh, brighter red shaded colors right there, basically stretching back into western Louisiana into eastern Texas. These are indicate what we call it the uh, hurricane warnings that are in effect. The dark red, the red shaded colors here indicates that there are tropical storm warnings out. Uh, as, it, as it stretches up towards uh, southern Arkansas, back into East Texas, including the Houston area, and over towards the New Orleans area. So, um, so yeah, lots, so lots to get, so lots uh, to talk about here this evening as far as lore goes. So let me go ahead and t turn on the tropical satellite and show you where the big uh, eye wall, the eye wall of the storm is right now, and it's right there. Goodness gracious, this is this is a big eye wall that we're watching pretty carefully uh, this evening as far as lower goes. And as I turn on the uh, track of the storm, so according to the 8 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center, it is still a major hurricane as a Cat 4, with winds estimating up to, up to about uh, 150 miles per hour. Whew. Man, that is, that is some pretty impressive winds that this uh, storm is producing, and it, and it continues to move to uh, very slowly to the north and northwest at about 15 miles per hour, so yeah. So that's why I hope, I hope everybody around Louisiana and near the Texas Gulf Coast have already been evacuated uh, already because this storm is going to be heading into their direction by overnight late tonight into early tomorrow morning. So so, so pr some pretty uh, pretty nasty stuff happening. But it looks like it will stay as a major hurricane once we get into early uh, tomorrow morning as winds again continue to stay around 150 miles per hour. But it looks like this could downgrade it to a tropical storm as winds go down about 70 as we head towards um, – Tomorrow afternoon, once it heads, once it heads, uh, heads up towards uh, uh, Shreveport into near Tyler, Texas, and and will still be at a, as a tropical storm, not just for uh, tomorrow afternoon, but once it heads up towards near Little Rock, Arkansas, as we head towards early Friday morning, and then down back into a depression once it makes uh, landfall, or maybe I should say, as the remnants of it uh, makes uh, an approach to the um, Tennessee into the Ohio Valley region. So that's something we'll be watching uh, too. Not just for Friday, but also into the weekend. And it looks like once it moves offshore, probably by late Saturday to early Sunday, it looks like this could this could turn back maybe to a tropical storm again. So, yeah. So, so that's why Laura is the big story tonight. And again, it's a hurricane. It's a, it's a major hurricane as, as we are seeing uh, right now. As a, as, a, as the Iowa is about to move towards the Texas and the Louisiana Gulf Coast regions, but let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, other local radar size and see what we're seeing as far as the uh, feeder bands go with this storm. So let me turn off the uh, uh, tropical satellite and turn off the track so we can get a better picture. So, so I'll go ahead and turn on the um, uh, the, uh, the Lake Charles radar and show you where the feeder bands uh, from Laura is right now, and. Uh, And as, and as you can see, we're seeing as you can see that uh, there's not a whole lot of feeder bands around the Lake Charles area, but there but there are some showers and a lot of uh, gusty winds with this right here outside of the eye wall of the storm, uh, not just for Lake Charles, but also around the Lafayette area. And of course, there are some uh, feeder bands right here uh, over around over around uh, Baton Rouge and into the, around the New Orleans area, where there are not just a where they're not under a tropical storm warning, but also under a tornado watch and a couple of uh, tornado warnings that are in effect uh, as well. So, so there's some feeder bands outside of the eye wall of Laura right now. Again, basically, not just for New Orleans or Baton Rouge, but also right up towards uh, at least all the way as far north as Shreveport and back over towards Tyler, Texas. So, it's going to be really a rough, uh, rough next 24 hours uh, for these folks along the, along the Gulf Coast area uh, to get hit by uh, this major storm. Again, that's Hurricane Laura, and again, that continues to move slowly due to the north and northwest at about 15 miles per hour. So that's why I said, but that's why I've said before that uh, I hope everybody. Uh, I hope everybody over in those areas have already evacuated safely, uh, maybe earlier today before the storm does approach, because again, it's going to be really a rough night and a rough first half of the day for the for, for not just uh, Lake Charles, but also around Lafayette and also for uh, Baymont and even south of Shreveport as we head towards, uh, again, the next uh, 24 hours. But as far as the winds go with, with, the, um, with the storm, let's go ahead and turn on the uh, velocity and show you how strong the winds are with, with the uh, uh, at least with the the outside of the eye wall, as I should say. And as you can see right now, as we zoom in a little closer, uh, basically, again, just south of Lake Charles. In south of Lafayette, we're seeing winds here estimating at about uh, between 
Look at this, already up to 85 miles per hour uh, as the winds are going towards the radar site. But the reds again indicates the, ra the winds are going away from the radar. So we got 85 miles per hour, 85 mile per hour winds uh, 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 towards the radar, at least as it heads up towards uh, Lafayette, or Lafayette, I should say. And also near Lake Charles, we're seeing winds here estimating uh, at about 50 miles per hour. And these are tropical storm force winds, not hurricane force winds as of yet. So, so that's why that, uh, uh, that Lake Charles looks to be in the direct path of the eye wall of Flora. So, yeah, so yeah, pretty nasty stuff uh, to track here tonight as far as the storm goes. So if you have any friends or any families that live in those areas, like not just for Lake Charles, but also near Shreveport or Lafayette or Baymont, I hope that you uh, reached out, reached out to them, and told them that uh, you know they need to evacuate uh, the area safely, and you know, and just tell them to be safe. So, so, so there, so there you go. So, that, so that's the update on Laura, and of course, I'll continue to post uh, post more updates on social media as more new advisories come out from the National Hurricane Center. But uh, but elsewhere in the tropics this evening, let's go ahead and take a look at the tropical satellite again and show you uh, uh, if we've seen anything developing across the Atlantic or the Caribbean islands tonight. Besides Laura. And it looks like uh, there are a couple of uh, tropical downpours that are beginning to, are beginning to develop right now near, near the areas between Jamaica and Cayman Islands, but it's not producing like maybe a wave at the moment. Maybe a possible wave, but not really a, a just a wave at the moment, so just keep that in mind. We'll still keep an eye on that for you guys in case if anything changes. Uh, but also, as we, as we uh, go ahead and pan over to the east towards the Atlantic near the coast of Africa, we're also watching uh, not, not this one right here, but also a couple of uh, smaller uh, developments right here, way off towards the west of Cabo, and also some more right here that is moving, uh, or well, is about to move off the coast of Africa, but is still inland. So... So we'll keep an eye. We'll keep an eye on that uh, too. But again, there again, the National Hurricane Center is not given any uh, like any development prob probabilities here at the moment. But uh, but that's something we'll uh, have our eyes out because remember we're in the peak of hurricane season and we know we know it's going to be another busy active uh, uh, season this year. So that's why you folks need to be prepping uh, for whatever storm does approach. So that's that. So, so that's a turn on the, a turn, or, or not turn on, turn off the uh, uh, tropical satellite. And as we switch things back to home in central Florida, again, if you're just, if you're just coming into Facebook Live right now, if you missed the radar just uh, a little while ago, well, here it is again. And like I said, nothing, nothing is going on right now here in the state. So I switch back to the Melbourne radar. Other than that, it's just, uh, just a few. Other than that, it looks like there's only a few tropical, again, isolated showers that are developing, again, just uh, off the coast of Brevard and Volusia counties. But uh, for the most part, it looks to be relatively dry in and around the viewing area. So, again, if you got any plans for tonight, then you are good to go. All right, so let's head over into um, the weekend. As we, as we switch things to the uh, GFS... And we'll see the same thing like we may see on Friday. Again, Friday looks to be a wet day for some places north of Orlando as storms do return. But it looks like almost everybody on Saturday will see on Saturday we'll see maybe a bit of a good shot of showers and thunderstorms. We'll give our coverage about 50% as we head towards that day. But again, it's not going to be a total all-day washout. So please keep that in mind. So if you had any big, uh, any big plans going on for Saturday, whether you expect to be going out to uh, the beach or maybe spend a day at the attractions. Don't cancel them because it's not going to rain all day long. So please note that it's, it's, it's just back into a sea breeze type pattern as we head towards, uh, again, Saturday. But as we take a look at our high temperatures that day, it looks like we'll be mostly, again, as usual, staying mostly in the 90s with heat index temperatures in the uh, triple digits. So it's not just the rain, but the heat continues, too. All right, headed into uh, Sunday, uh, looks like we'll see uh, still the same thing we'll see on Saturday, but not looking as high as far as the rain chances go for that day. So there could be maybe just about a 40% coverage of some late afternoon showers and storms, especially maybe from I-4 and west. But it looks like farther uh, south to go into uh, southern Florida, could be, there could be maybe a very higher coverage of rain as we head towards uh, that day. So again, if you got any big plants outdoors that day, uh, don't panic because we're not expecting this to last all day long. 
So please note that. And as we look at our high temperatures, and again, it looks like we'll stay mostly on the hotter category with mostly upper 80s whenever we get the rain uh, going. But other than that, it looks like we'll be mostly in the 90s with the index temperatures in the triple digits. So that's uh, Sunday. Now heading into Monday of next week, the last day of August. Uh, looks like we'll see, again, the same thing, just another day of some uh, late afternoon, evening, active type of showers and thunderstorms. It looks like the higher chances look to be staying west of I-4 and right along the I-75 corridor. But looks like, uh, for now, according to the GFS here in Central Florida, at least the rest of us, even even here in Orlando, it looks like we'll see the rain chances stay as low as, as, low as about 30%. So we'll watch that carefully. Looks like there could be some heavy rain down around South Florida too. Uh, that may happen on Monday as well. So, so we'll keep an eye. We'll keep not. We'll keep an eye on the conditions for you guys as we head towards the next uh, several days. But our temperatures, though, again, look to stay hot and muggy with more 90s and heated X temperatures in the triple digits. But uh, if you look up here across parts of Mississippi and Alabama, you know where those temperatures are starting to cool down a little bit. That's because that they're expecting another high chance for some showers and thunderstorms. Uh, as we head towards that day, too. All right, heading into uh, one week from ye one week from uh, yesterday. This is for next Tuesday, the first day of September. Uh, looks like we'll see maybe an, maybe a pretty much an, act an, an act active day. I'm sorry uh, of showers and late day uh, thunderstorms in and around Central Florida. So looking at, we're going to call our coverage uh, at about sixty percent that day if that trend is correct. So we'll see. It looks like the higher chances of, chances of rain will continue as well across parts of the Mississippi Valley Region 2 for next Tuesday also. And as we look at our high temperatures below, for us, uh, it's not just the rain, but more in the way of heat continues with, with another day of temperatures staying mostly in the mid-90s, uh, maybe upper 90s if some, if some places do get up to that uh, mark, with the index temperatures only in the triple digits. So that's, again, that's next Tuesday as we get close to enter uh, September 1st. All right, uh, this is uh, one week from today, next Wednesday, September 2nd. Uh, looks like this will be another day of some showers and storms, but looks like the higher chances looks to be moving off towards the I-95 corridor. So basically anywhere from Melbourne to Daytona and Palm Coast, you may see about a 50% chance for some showers and some active uh, late afternoon thunderstorms as we head towards that day with looking at uh, lesser chances from I-4 in west. But once you go farther up north into the uh, Mississippi Valley region, up towards the uh, panhandle of Florida into Georgia, Mississippi, and Alabama, it looks like uh, more higher chances of rain will continue as we as we approach next Wednesday as well. So it could be, could, be, could be really a soggy day for the next several days to wrap up August and to enter September for uh, the southeast. For us, though, for temperatures, it looks like we'll stay mostly, again, as usual, in the 90s, with heat index values only in the triple digits, but, but with the uh, higher chances of rain continuing here for folks up in the north, at least for Mississippi Valley region, they're expect, you know, these temperatures are expected to be mostly cooling down more briefly into the 80s, too. All right, heading into a week from tomorrow, next Thursday, September 3rd. Rain chances for now looks it looks to be going down pretty low at this point, including right here in Orlando. So it looks like there may be about a 40% coverage of some late-day storms, especially south of Orlando. So basically anywhere from Kissimmee to Winter Haven, uh, Lakeland to Titusville, it looks like it may see a bit of a good shot of some storms as we head towards that day, if that model run is correct, but too early to tell. Uh, other than other than that, it looks like we'll see the we'll see more way of the partly sunny skies with maybe just about a twenty percent chance for maybe a storm or two. But under than that, it looks like we'll be looking dry for other places if that trend is correct again. And as we take a look at our high temperatures, once again, we'll stay mostly uh, again in the nineties here in and around Central Florida. So the hot weather does continue to uh, here in the Sunshine State, and that continues as well for the. Uh, Georgia coast, including Savannah, all the way up towards Charleston, South Carolina. Even Myrtle Beach, too, can see some hot temperatures, too, uh, next Thursday, like we'll see here in Florida. All right, heading into the first half of the Labor Day weekend. Uh, getting into uh, next Friday, September 4th, it looks like we'll see our rain chances uh, go back up again. Back to about a 50% chance, we'll call as we head towards that day, basically from Orlando North. 
as the RC Breeze pattern continues, since we're not quite done with the, the wet season yet. And temperatures below, again, staying to be pretty hot, with mostly in the way of 90s and heated X temperatures in the uh, triple digits, not just for us here in Florida, but across most of the entire Mississippi Valley region, too. All right, heading into uh, next Saturday, September 5th, uh, still the first half of the holiday weekend. It looks like we'll see uh, still maybe a little bit of a a little bit of more chance of some rain in central Florida, but not looking as quite as high. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on it for you guys in case if anything changes. So if instead, we're going to call for about a 30 to a 40 percent coverage of some uh, isolated to even a few scattered pop up showers and storms uh, here in the viewing area with a higher chance of staying farther up north into, uh, uh, let's say, between. Tallahassee and Jacksonville, all the way up towards Georgia and eastern Alabama. Temperatures below that. For us, it looks like we'll stay mostly uh, hotter and muggy with 90s, with heat index temperatures in the triple digits. All right, heading into now the real pure land of Voodoo Country. This is taking you to Sunday, September 6th, the second half of the holiday weekend. Uh, for, for, right, for right now, it looks like we may see just about a 40% coverage of some late-day uh, pop-up showers and storms in and around portions of the metro into portions of uh, Seminole, maybe uh, Marion, Lake, and Sumter counties. But otherwise, the rest of our viewing area looks to stay pretty dry for the moment. So, again, we'll keep an eye on, that. We'll keep an eye on the holiday weekend forecast for you folks because I know you got some big plans going on uh, for that long three-day weekend. And as we look at our high temperatures once again... We will stay mostly hot and humid with in the way of 90s and heated X temperatures in the triple digits. All right, heading into Labor Day Monday, September 7th. It seems like we'll see, again, most of us looking okay, but cannot rule out maybe a couple of uh, pop-up showers and a couple of thunder showers uh, for the holiday. Right now, the higher chances of rain looks to stay uh, down in southern Florida and even some across portions of Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. So for right now, it looks like you may be in pretty good shape as far as outdoor plants go. But again, we'll keep an eye on it for you guys in case if anything changes. Because like I said before, we're in the land of food country, so you know changes will, be, will likely be made as we get closer to the holiday, to the Labor Day holiday, I should say. As far as temperatures go, again, we'll stay mostly in the upper 80s and perhaps even low to mid-90s. And that continues uh, not just for Florida, but also all the way up towards the southern portions of uh, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle region. So there you have it, guys. All right, uh, the day after Labor Day, this is for Tuesday, September 8th, two weeks from yesterday. yesterday it looks like we may see about a 40% chance for maybe a few uh, isolated, even a few scattered pop-up showers and storms, especially maybe south of Orlando. But other than that, it looks like most of us may be staying dry as far as our uh, weather pattern goes if this trend does does stay correctly, but we'll see. Temperatures still for highs. Looks to stay again in the muggy category with mostly mid-90s and heated X temperatures in the triple digits. And then heading into two weeks from today, this is for Wednesday, the 9th of September. It looks like we'll see... Uh, Again, uh, just to maybe a few isolated quick moving showers, perhaps a thunderstorm or two, but not expecting anything to be major uh, as, of, as of right now. Uh, but again, things, again, things could still change as we get closer, so we'll see. And our temperature is below. Again, stays mostly hotter in the 90s. Heat index temperatures in the triple digits. All right, heading into uh, two weeks from tomorrow. This is for Thursday, September 10th. It looks like we'll see still about, just about a 40% chance for some spotty showers and a couple of thunderstorms late in the day. Uh, other than that, it looks like some other places will stay partly sunny and dry. And uh, temperatures below for highs looks to be, again, staying the same. Upper 80s and perhaps low to middle 90s. And then as we wrap up this update tonight, we're going to end with uh, Friday, the 11th of September. Uh, it looks like we'll see, again, just another uh, active pattern of some sea breeze storms for some places in central Florida. So for now, I don't see anything, uh, anything as far as the tropics go for the next couple of weeks. So that could be some good news, but we'll see. And uh, temperatures below. 
Again, staying mostly in the 90s. Heat index temperatures staying in the triple digits as the summer pattern continues as we get through, again, the next couple of weeks as we wrap up or as we get close to wrap up August and as, and as we're about to open up the month of uh, September. So there you all there you all go, guys. Okie dokie, I'm going to start wrapping up this uh, Facebook Live feed on this uh, Wednesday evening. So that's it for the forecast video update uh, on this evening edition. I hope to be back here again tomorrow for another live Facebook update on the weather in Central Florida, including tracking Laura. Uh, if I get up on time, maybe in the morning, I'll do an update on that. But if not, then it'll be as usual between 8 and 8.30 in the evening. And I'll continue, as always, here by posting more notes or updates on my blog and Facebook pages uh, 24-7. But in the meantime, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your uh, Wednesday night, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care of yourselves, and God bless you all.